Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to class. Thank you, online students, for um, joining class this morning. Also, welcome to our e-learning students who will be listening to this lecture uh, later on, and welcome to all our uh, in-person students. I think a couple of you joined in new, right? So I think two or three of you are new. You're new. You're new. OK. Yes, you also. Yeah. So we'll get to know you all later on, but thank you for uh, joining class this morning. Um, we are studying this course, Ministers Foundation, yes. And we're looking at our first publication, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life, OK? And we said there are nine guideposts that can help us to know God's will and plan for our lives. Does God, has a, does God have a plan and purpose for our lives? Yeah. Yes. Can we know God's plan and purpose for our life? Yes. yes. OK. So there are nine ways here mentioned, but there are more than nine. We don't just stick to this. OK, but this will help us. The first one is to recognize the general teaching in God's word. God's word, we saw, helps us to understand and to know his plan and purpose for our lives. The second one we said is understanding the seeds in our life so what is the seeds what are the seeds what are the seeds gifts talents your abilities okay um whatever god has placed in your life then the third one we looked at recognize the stirring within and the fourth one we looked at last week again was recognize the grace of God. So we said that each one of us, God has called us for a specific role, a specific function, whether it's in the body of Christ or in the marketplace. And how do we know our calling, our function is by knowing our gifts, our abilities. And God gives us the grace to enable us to fulfill the calling and the function that he has given for us. So we look at all of that um, Last week, in depth, we studied about, um, uh, you know, how um, God gives us the grace, okay? Um, and um, we looked at that in page number 15, 16, 17, and 18, okay? So today, we'll begin by looking at um, recognize the leading of God's Spirit. Before that, can any one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone can lead us in prayer? Can you please take the mic because our online students will not be able to hear? Thank you, Father. Hello. Thank you, Father Lord, for this wonderful time, Lord. Thank you, Father Lord, for the morning. And thank you, Father Lord, for the studies we are having, Lord. Lord, I want to pray whatever we are going to study, whatever we are going to learn, Lord. Lord, put those studies in our mind so we can understand the the word, the word, the, your word properly and build, like give us your wisdom and knowledge so we can study your word nicely, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. So today we'll uh, begin looking at the fifth guidepost, okay? Uh, how God leads us to know his plan is through the Holy Spirit, okay? Uh, look at what Romans chapter 8 verse 14 says. Can somebody read that please? Romans 8 14. For as many as are led by the Holy Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Amen. So here it says that... You know, you and I are children of God, we are sons of God, and hence we have the privilege to be led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can lead, can direct you, he can show you what you're supposed to do. Okay, look at what verse 16 says. The same chapter, verse 16, can somebody read that please? The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Yes, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. So the Holy Spirit will bear witness in your 
spirit in your inner being, which means the Holy Spirit is going to testify. He's going to speak. He's going to give you a testimony of the truth. Uh, that is what it means about bearing witness. So the Holy Spirit in your spirit man will tell you what you need to do, where you need to go, what is God's plan for your life, what is the uh, truth. Okay. So the Holy Spirit will lead you into the inner witness to your spirit man. He will tell you what is the plan of God and he will lead you. Can someone please read John chapter 16 verses 13 to 15, please? However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth for he is not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he'll speak and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to, to you. Amen. So who's going to speak? The Holy Spirit is going to speak to whom? To us, to you and to me. Okay. So there in heaven, we just have to imagine this in our minds. Okay. God has a plan and a purpose for each one of our lives. Even as God speaks his plan and purpose, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal that or he's going to speak it to your inner spirit. Okay. To your spirit man. He will reveal the plans and the purposes of God. Uh, to you. He will tell you uh, things that are to come. He will show you ahead of time what you're supposed to do. And how is he going to do it? He's going to bear witness in your spirit, man. He's just going to speak. He's just going to, maybe you can uh, hear him speak. You can just feel, you can sense. There will be an inner impression, but it will be in your inner, uh, in, inner witness in your spirit, man okay so that is going to where that is a place where you're going to hear from him and that is going to be the place he's going to tell you what is the next season of your life or in this season what you need to do or what god's plan and purpose is for your life okay he will also reveal the changes that are happening in your life and the changes that are going to come in your life okay so for example just take for example, we are in 2024, okay? So the Holy Spirit will just bear witness in your spirit man and tell you that, hey, next year you are going to get a new job, okay? So even as you receive that from the Holy Spirit, you can begin to pray and say, God, okay, I'm just sensing that, you know, you're, um, you're telling me that I'm going to get a new job. So this is what is a, what I need to do to plan and to prepare for this new job. Then the Holy Spirit may reveal to you, hey, this new job is going to involve a lot of traveling. So if you're married, you'll tell your spouse, or if you're not, if you're unmarried, you'll tell your parents, and then you will prepare yourself for traveling, okay? Because you know that the job, the new job that you're going to take up is going to entail a lot of, uh, or requires a lot of, traveling so you prepare yourself now you come into to enter into 2025 you resign your own old job you get a new job and then you know uh, your boss calls you one day and says hey i want you to go for three days to tumbaktu okay someplace i'm just saying tumbaktu okay for three days i want you to travel to tumbaktu okay and then you're thinking in your spirit man hey you know god had already revealed this to me and he had already uh, you know revealed his plan for me and he had already prepared for me and here i am in a place where i have to go for a job assignment that requires travel and i'm not taken up by surprise but i'm already prepared for it okay so god is going to reveal to you every step of the way he will reveal to you what is going to happen the next season of your life and why does he do it because he wants you to prepare for the next season of your life. In this season, he wants you to do what he is asking you to do in this season of life. But also he's telling you what is going to come up in the next season so that you can prepare and you're not taken up by surprise. But, you know, mentally, emotionally, physically, uh, you're just prepared and you're ready to go. Okay. And so you are just there in that place and say, God, thank you for preparing me uh, well ahead of 
time. So here the scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit will prepare us ahead of time. He will show you things that you need to do, which means he's getting you ready to prepare you for the plan and the purposes that God has for your life. But what do you need to do? You need to listen to the Holy Spirit. Okay. How many of you all listen to Radio City this morning? How many of you all listen to Radio City this morning? Nobody? Okay. None of you listen to Radio City this morning, but did you know that Radio City was always on, t on air? Yes. Whether you tuned in or not, Radio City was all the time on air, right? But the thing what you did not do is you did not tune into Radio City. The same thing with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is trying to tell you or reveal to you the plans and the purposes of God. But what do you need to do? You need to tune into the Holy Spirit. You need to listen to him. And how do you listen to him? You train your senses. Just like we said, when we read God's word, the first guidepost, when we read God's word, just not read it as a ritual, but meditate on it, feed on it, and let God's word fill your heart, your mind, and your spirit being so that the word of God trains your senses to know what is the good, perfect, and pleasing will of God. Okay? Yes, God's word reveals to us what we need to do, his plan and purposes, but how do we know from God's word? We need to train our senses and how do we train our senses the more we read god's word the more we meditate on god's word the more we are pondering on his word god's word is filling our hearts and our minds and our spirit man and then when when god is speaking to us you know we are our senses are trained to listen and to know what god is guiding us leading us and to know what is the good pleasing and perfect will of God. In the same way, we need to listen to the Holy Spirit. Okay. So how do we do that? We need to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Just like you speak to the Father and Son, speak to the Holy Spirit, fellowship with Him. You know, um, ask the Holy Spirit, what do I say in the situation? What do I do? Or you're going, you're going shopping, show me which shop to go, which is the right thing to buy, or I'm praying for somebody. You know, what do I pray for them? Or somebody's come to you and asked you for counsel and guidance, ask the Holy Spirit. So the more you're tuning into the Holy Spirit, the more you're able to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. So you need to go before, the, before God and you need to ask the Holy Spirit, Ask God and ask him and say, God, what are you saying about my life? You can ask this every day to God. God, what are you saying about my life? What are you saying about the direction in my life? You can also ask God saying, God, is everything okay in my life? Am I doing what is your will or I'm doing something that is outside your will? Or God, am I doing what you want me to do? You know, um, do you want me to make any changes in my life? So even as you ask these questions daily to God, it's not there in your books. If you want to write it down, you can write it down. You can ask God, God, what are you saying about my life? What are you saying about the direction in my life? You can also go ask God saying, God, is everything okay in my life? You know, am I doing what you are wanting me to do? Am I doing your will? Is there anything that you want me to change in my life? And when you ask these questions, you have to listen, right? You have to quieten your hearts and minds. Don't think, okay, what's for lunch? What should I make for dinner? I have to go here. I have to do this. I haven't finished this work. You know, when our minds are very stressed and troubled, we cannot listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a very gentle person of the Trinity. So to listen to the Holy Spirit, we need to be very calm and very composed. Remember when the Holy Spirit came on Jesus in the baptism? How did he come on him? Like a dove. Why did the Holy Spirit come as a dove? Of course, as a symbol of the Holy Spirit, peaceful. But also the dove came and rested on Jesus' shoulder, right? If a dove is on your shoulder, how will you move? How will you walk? Will you walk fast? How will you walk? Very slowly and gently because you don't want to disturb the dove. So that is, there is a significance of that. It's meaning to say, hey, the Holy Spirit is very, very gentle being. Okay. He's a, a gentle God and he 
you know, when our minds are calm and composed and just, you know, fixed on God, that is when we can hear him very, very clearly. So the Holy Spirit leads us. He shows us things to uh, come. Okay. Uh, uh, look at what 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10 says. Can somebody read that, please? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. But I, but as it is written, I, I has not seen, not ear heard, nor have entered into, in, into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who love him, but God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, Yes, the deep things of God. So here God is saying, hey, I've got some wonderful, beautiful, amazing things that I have prepared for you, that I have planned for you. And the Bible says that God reveals this plan for us. And how does he reveal it to us? By his spirit. Okay, he reveals, to it, he reveals it to us by his spirit. So you and I need to tune in. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit spirit now sometimes you know the leading of the spirit is not always fully understandable sometimes we cannot fully understand the leading of the spirit look at what it says in john chapter 3 verse 8 can somebody read that please the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes so is everyone who is born of the spirit amen so here it says the wind blows where it wishes. And how do you know the wind is blowing? You feel it, okay? You hear it, yes. You hear the sound of it. You even see the leaves and trees uh, moving, right? But you cannot explain where the wind is coming from and where it is going. You just know it is blowing, okay? So many times the leading of the spirit is like that okay i mean it's there but you can't explain everything about it so somebody tells asks you hey how is the holy spirit speaking to you okay what are you feeling sometimes you can say what you're feeling because the holy spirit reveals to us through his to feeling you know when uh, we are feeling when we're praying about something there is peace there is joy that means the holy spirit is saying go ahead do it suppose you're restless you know, very anxious. That means the Holy Spirit is saying, hey, don't do it. Don't go there. Don't start this business or don't, um, you know, get into that course. So that's not the right job. Sometimes there is a, a lot of uh, stirring within, you know, restlessness and anger and you want to do something. That means the Holy Spirit is saying, hey, I want you to take action. Okay, don't just sit quietly. I want you to take action. That's a steering. So sometimes the Holy Spirit reveals to us through feelings, you know, um, or when we are praying and there is just, uh, you know, a weighty presence, like a weight coming over us. That means it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it can be, you know, fire that comes upon us. We feel heat. The Holy Spirit is just filling us. He's just ministering to us. Sometimes we can just feel, uh, you know, peace and love and just calmness. That's another way the Holy Spirit is ministering to us. Sometimes we can feel like rain, you know, and it's just refreshing to us. So Holy Spirit comes in different ways, and we can experience him. We can feel him in different ways. But if you ask, hey, tell me, how did you know the Holy Spirit spoke to you? You know? And sometimes the answer can be, sorry, I can't explain it because I just know something just inside me is telling me. I just can't explain it to you, but it's there. It's exactly like what we read in John chapter 3 verse 8. We know the wind is blowing, but we do not know where it's coming from and where it is going. Okay. Are you all with me? Yes. Able to understand? Okay. So how does the Holy Spirit speak to us? Okay. So there on page number 19. A few things are given. He bears witness with our spirit, an inner impression in your spirit. So when you're praying about something, it's an, you feel an inner impression. You don't see anything. Okay, You may not even feel, but the impression is there. Impression is like you can just experience it. You can just see things, but you don't see a vision. You don't see a dream. There's no pictures, but it's just in your spirit, man. So there's an impression in your spirit okay and something inside of you is telling you hey this is right 
or this is not right, this is wrong, or don't do this, or this is not the right thing. So when there's an inner witness, uh, you know, and God, the Holy Spirit is ministering to you, telling you, you act on it. If there is no inner witness and you're praying about something, there is no inner witness. You're saying, God, uh, you know, I've come to Bible college. I don't know whether this is the right place. You know, what do you want me to do? You don't hear any inner witness. That means the Holy Spirit is saying, hey, I brought you to Bible college. Continue with Bible college. Or you're in a job place and you're praying and say, God, I don't want to work in this job place. And you're not hearing anything from God. It could be that he's saying, hey, continue in this job place. I know when I need to take you out and into the next season of your life. So when you don't hear any witness, it does. It means the Holy Spirit is saying, there is no change. Go with what you have heard last from him. Okay. And then if there's a witness telling you to do something, you obey and you act on it. Okay. And sometimes there are warning signs, like I said, to these different feelings that we, the Holy Spirit, even, um, you know, um, uh, ministers to us in our spirit man. You know, our spirit man also has the five senses. Yes, you learn that in the Holy Spirit class. Our spirit man also has the five senses. So the Holy Spirit also ministers to taste. That's why it says, taste and see that the Lord is good. It's not literal taste, but it is, you know, um, uh, to. Um, uh, to the spirit man, you can also smell. I remember one of the uh, our old Bible college students just WhatsApped me and said, I was praying today and I just got this wonderful, beautiful fragrance. There was no agarbati, there was no neighboring houses burning any agarbati, there was no room for, uh, you know, order that was sprayed, no perfume that I put. So what is this? So then I just said, it's the way of Holy Spirit just ministering to you. The Holy Spirit is just coming in a loving, in a gentle, in a nice way saying, I'm here. I'm here to minister to you. I, I care for you. Maybe you're going through a season of distress, of anxiety, and the Holy Spirit is just ministering to you. So smell. And through our feelings, okay, the Holy Spirit ministers to us. And I told you how he ministers, okay? So that is the inner witness. Secondly, the Holy Spirit ministers to us through his word. So when you're praying for something, suddenly there will be a word that comes in your spirit man or in your mind. So God is speaking through that scripture verse. Or when you're praying and asking God for something and you're reading the scripture, there can be one verse that just jumps out at you. And then you know, hey, this is the answer. So this is how I receive most of my answers. One of the ways is I listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks. But most of the times I've received answers from the word of God. And recently I was praying about... Um, some things, I, I was praying about one thing, then another thing came up and another third important decision that I had to make three things and I was praying for these three things. And I just as I prayed and I was reading the Bible, amazingly through that scripture passage, through that scripture, one scripture verse, that verse just leapt at me and God was answering me exactly in the order of one, two, three that I was praying for in that same exact order God was answering me. And I was like, my gosh, how perfect can it get? You know, so God's word is so beautiful. God speaks through his word. And I was like, exactly those three points I'm praying, okay, in the same order, the same order, I'm getting the three answers for each of those three things. And it was just so amazing. So if you want answers and you want to know God's will and plan for your life, don't run to people. I'm not saying it's... Uh, not uh, good or not right. You can still go to pastors and men and women of God and ask them to pray. But God is there willing to speak to you. The Holy Spirit can bear will, you know, witness. He can speak through the word of God and he can also speak through other people. Okay. So when you're praying about something, God quickens a word, a scripture, and that scripture verse guides you. The third thing is through ideas, impressions, pictures, dreams, and vision. So, you know, sometimes God can reveal his plan and purpose through a vision. You see a vision, a dream, or to some pictures, or, um, you know, uh, it can also be through a prophetic word. 
okay a prophetic word that can come god can speak to you but what is important is that we need to know that the holy spirit speaks to us we need to tune into the holy spirit and we need to uh, discern whether it's the holy spirit speaking or it's our own voice that is speaking how do you know it's the holy spirit speaking to us how do you know it's the holy spirit speaking to you yes thank you it always glorifies jesus christ it does not glorify you it doesn't glorify your situation it just glorifies jesus christ so when the holy spirit speaks whatever he's asking you or telling you to do it will always bring glory to jesus and will always exalt jesus okay so the the um, uh, fifth guidepost that we learned is you know uh, recognize the leading of god's spirit we'll study more about this in receiving god's guidance for your life okay we'll move on to the sixth guidepost the sixth guidepost is recognize the circumstances now very often god leads us and guides us into the things that he has planned and prepared for us by orchestrating circumstances or by setting up circumstances and situations in our life it could be god closing a door in your life or you know uh, he could be something that is opening a door or he can create an opportunity out of nowhere and he can just bring you into that okay you can get somebody in your life to orchestrate things for you to lead you to guide you into doing things on your behalf or somebody can push you into you know your call and your purpose in a certain way what god is leading you and guiding you so i told you um, you know last week or a week before last how you know i started this project for teenagers in this family ministry i was working i was working on this project for 5 years it was my baby i simply loved it i was very passionate about it but then i was asked to leave that organization right and then the door was closed on me i couldn't do anything about it and then i prayed god opened and do for me an opportunity that came which i did not do anything about it but just god opened it for me and the holy spirit told me to apply to apc and i just applied i went for the interview and i was back again doing the same thing that god had called me to do to do ministry among children in schools and to start another project called catalyst that is apc school outreach ministry so god can orchestrate things in your life situations people circumstances and he can order those things and he can guide you for what he has for your life look at what it says in second chronicles chapter 16 was um 9 can somebody read that please for the eyes of the lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him amen and this you have done foolishly therefore from now you shall have the wards Amen. Thank you. So we see that God's eyes is scanning the whole world. That means He's just looking around the whole world. He's looking for whom? Who is He looking for? Those whose hearts are devoted to Him, or those whose hearts are loyal to Him. And what is God saying to those whose hearts are devoted and loyal to Him, and committed to Him? Yes, he's saying when your heart is committed and loyal to God, what is He going to do? He is going to show Himself strong on your behalf. He is going to exert His strength on your behalf. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, Amen. Okay, so um, so God can exert, you know, His strength into the areas of your life on behalf of you. to order circumstances and situations in your life okay look at what uh, psalms chapter 37 verses 23 and 24 says can somebody read that please the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord and he delights in his way through he fall he shall not be utterly cast down for the lord upholds him with his hand amen okay so whose ways that god delight in whose ways that god delight in a good man or a righteous man 
And what does he say? A steps of a righteous man, what does God do? Is ordering it. The steps of a good man or righteous man are ordered by God. Okay. In a way, you know, we can't explain it. If you can if you ask how is God going to order our steps, okay, you can't explain it fully. But what we know is from the scripture is hey, this is what God says. How is God going to do it? How is he going to order my steps? You know, I necessarily don't know, or I needn't have to know as well. But the Bible says that my steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and I just believe it. Amen. Okay. So if you are a person who is committed to living righteously, you have this guarantee, you have this assurance, you have this confidence in your heart that your steps are being ordered by the Lord. Amen. Okay. And though you fall, you can make mistakes. We are all not perfect. Even though we are righteous, we are, God's righteousness is account put into our account. It's imputed upon us. It's imputed in us. Okay. His righteousness. We are not righteous in our own strength, but we can fall. Even if you fall, what will happen? What does this verse say? Look at your Bibles. What does it verse say? Yes, God upholds us with his hand. That means he holds us up. He strengthens us with his hand. Okay. Um, so even if you make mistakes, it's not the end of everything. Okay, God will help you to get up and will guide you and lead you and order your steps again. Okay. Now, for example, you're ab about to make a decision in life. Okay. And you face a closed door. Now, closed door can mean either that God does not want you to enter in or that's not right for you. But it also does not mean that, you know, uh, this is not the right thing. God can also be saying, hey, there's a better way of doing it okay this is not the right place this is not the right opportunity there is something better that i have for you so he can open another door that he wants to wants you to walk in and through that so that you can advance his kingdom so that you can fulfill his plan and purpose for your life so when god shuts a door don't say, oh, you know, what a beautiful opportunity. I missed it. Or this is the person I wanted to marry and God did not, you know, allow this to happen. And we're very heartbroken. We go through depression. We stop going to church. We stop reading our Bible. You know, we don't have anything to do with God. No, when God removes something from your life, removes a situation, uh, 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 and a door of opportunity that you see as an opportunity or somebody in your life, he removes them, then just know that God has something better for you. Okay, just trust him in those times. Now, when God opens a door for our lives, uh, of opportunities in our life, we need to know that there could mean more responsibilities, right? It does not mean that, hey, you know, God has opened a door for my life. I just go down. I sit down there because God is my father. He's a king. I just press the grace button or press this blessing button and everything just happens automatically. God is all powerful. He will just do things like that for me. No. When God opens doors of opportunities for your life, you got to walk through it. And God is not going to give you a lift to just lift you up. You know, it requires a lot of commitment, requires a lot of hard work. Nothing comes free. Okay. So I remember that, you know, when I, I told you, you know, that that season when I had to leave that organization for one month, I was not doing anything. And when school started, I was saying, God, you know, here is school starting and I'm not here ministering among school children. And what did God do? God immediately opened a door of opportunity in my life. But when he opened that door of opportunity, it was not easy. Because nobody had started school outreach ministry at APC. So I had to write the whole curriculum. I had to, um, uh, you know, market it in schools. I had to go travel, meet principals. I had to get people on board. I had to complete writing the curriculum. I had to train the people. And I tell you, it has been real hard work. Okay. So when God opens those of opportunities in our life, you know, uh, it, nothing comes free of cost. There's a price that you have to pay. And sometimes it's quite a lot of hard 
work okay so be prepared and be ready to work don't think hey you know i'm i'm a child of god everything is going to be easy everything is going to be nice it's going to be sweet okay not necessarily because there can be challenges that comes and god will put those challenges those circumstances but we need to press in and we need to be faithful and committed you know if you want to drink grape juice or strawberry juice or orange juice or apple juice what do you have to do to the fruit squeeze it or crush it right when you crush it fully in the mixer when it's crushed that's when you get the juice okay so life is also like that you know we'll be crushed a little bit we will face a lot of challenges it's going to be tough it's going to be hard it's going to be difficult but it will you know uh, it will when we persevere it changes our character and also it has lasting values okay so nothing that god is going to give in your life is going to come easy okay um, god is going to stretch you a bit and that's when you can increase into your capacity okay when a mother is carrying a child in its in in her womb what happens what happens to the womb the womb stretches they say it's 800 times more than what it normally is the mother saying hey i don't want my tummy to stretch you know i don't want all of this i don't want to put on weight i don't want to look i want to look slim and trim you can't give birth to a baby right it's everything is, takes that struggle and that change and so god is going to expand you stretch you he's going to increase your capacity and when you do when he does that you need to be committed and you need to stay um faithful okay look at what hebrews chapter 12 um verses 5 to 11 says okay i'm not going to read all of that but i'm just going to mention that you know it says here that god chastens whom he loves just like a father chastens his children god chastens whom he loves now what is the meaning of chastens corrects yes sorry what did you say scold okay yes it also can be punishing scolding disciplining okay so chasten means you know just like a parent corrects disciplines their child right some of you are parents here and i'm sure you have disciplined your children and all of us are children and i'm sure some of us have been disciplined by our parents some of us more than the rest i've been disciplined more because i was the naughtiest among the four of them in my family okay so i was chastened the most by my parents okay but why does do parents chasten their children or correct their children because they love them right now they will punish them they will not give them tv or buy them something or give them chocolates or snack or allow them to go and play but will a will a parent say okay you're not listening to me or disobeying me i'll take you and put you next to a corona patient so that you can get covid and when you struggle you will know how it is to disobey will a parent do that the parents say that, you know, um, you're being very naughty, you're not listening to me, I'm going to take you in the middle of the road and let a bike or a car run over you. Then when you're in hospital, you will learn how valuable mom and dad are. Will you do that? No, nobody will do that. Okay, in the same way, God will not do that to us. So sometimes we say, hey, you know, God is giving me the sickness because he wants to correct me. Sorry. God is not the author of sickness and disease. He does not give us sickness and disease to correct us. He can correct us in other means. God does not give us what he does not have. Okay. So that is a wrong interpretation. So just like parents will not give sickness and disease to teach their children. Some of us say, you know, God put me in this accident so that when I take rest, God is going to, God speaks to me and tells me, hey, you know, you're not reading your Bible. You're not praying or you're so sometimes it can be our own foolishness sometimes our sin causes uh, things to happen in our life and that can cause us to you know to come to repentance but it does not mean that god has put us in an accident to teach us something god can teach us otherwise are you getting what i'm saying yes okay so uh when god corrects us the holy spirit corrects us he's saying hey don't do it that is wrong okay thirdly god can use people around us to speak 
his wisdom and tell us what is right and wrong okay god can also orchestrate circumstances around us to correct us now some of the circumstances we face in our life can be because of our own wrong choices um, it's not necessary because you know god is doing it in our lives is because we have made that wrong choice and one example we can see is in deuteronomy chapter 8 Verses one to ten. Can you please take the mic? And you need to speak in that. So uh, we look at Deuteronomy chapter eight, verses one to ten. We're not going to read that, but in Deuteronomy chapter eight, verses one to ten, it's basically talking about the people of Israel. Okay, and later on, this is the incident that has happened in Numbers. So it's already happened in Numbers, and. Um, Uh, and Moses is talking about this in Deuteronomy chapter eight, verses one to ten. Uh, okay, so he's telling in verse two. You remember that the Lord your God and how you led you forty years in the wilderness to humble you and test you to know what is in your heart, whether you would keep his com uh, commandments or not. Okay, and look at what he says in verse three and verse four. Can somebody read that, please? So he, so he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, or did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that uh, proceeds from the mouth of Lord. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these forty years. Was five as well. You should know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. Amen. So, what is Moses saying here? He's referring to the people's rebellion when God brought them out of Egypt through the wilderness. They come to uh, the wilderness, the, the past the Red Sea. They come into the wilderness of Paran, and they are going to enter the promised land. And now this. Um, Uh, this narrative, which I'm saying, is in in Numbers chapter 13, where God tells Moses, Moses, raise up, you know, choose twelve spies, twelve leaders from the twelve tribes of uh, Israel, send them to spy the land of Canaan. Okay, so they go and spy the land of Canaan for how many days? Forty days, and they come back after forty days, and ten of them spread a bad report. They say, "Hey, the the towns are very fortified, strong. The people living in those towns are like giants. People of warfare, very strong, and we look like grasshoppers. That means we look very small in their midst. And so, we if we go and fight against them, we are surely going to lose the." Battle. We are all going to die. And so, when the people heard these ten speaking like this, all of the people, the Israelites, started grumbling and complaining and murmuring and crying and saying, "God, you brought us in the desert in such a time like this to die." Okay. And so they decided, "Hey, let's go back to Egypt." But two of them, Joshua and Caleb, said, "No. If God has promised us." And he has brought us thus far, and he's promised us that he's going to give us this land of Canaan. Then he will surely do it for us. But they were so angry with Joshua and Caleb, they wanted to stone them. Okay, and so we see that God heard them, and God was so angry with them. And God said, "Because you did not believe in me, because you did not trust in me, what is your punishment? It will happen just like you have spoken." You said we will die in this wilderness. You will die in this wilderness. You will not enter the promised land, excepting for Joshua and Caleb and those who were twelve years and you know below. They uh, they grew up. They were able to enter the promised land. And he says, you know, for forty years you will roam around this desert, this wilderness. Why forty years? For forty days, forty years. One year for each day. But we see that he, um, you know, um, that they eventually all of them died there in that desert, excepting Joshua and Caleb, and those who were twelve years and younger. You know, they grew up and they were able to enter the promised land. Now, is was it God's intent for them to roam around the desert for forty years? No, it was not. Was it God's original plan for them? 
No. What was God's plan for them? They come to the wilderness of Paran and they enter the promised land. That was God's plan. But, you know, the, uh, we see that because of their disobedience, they ended up in their desert. But in spite of that, God took care of them. So we read that in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 to 10. He says, he led them through the wilderness. He felt them mana from heaven. He brought water out of the rock. He sent them food from KFC. Okay, quails. He sent them quails. Okay, that is, I'm just joking. Okay, he did wonderful things for them. He made sure that even their Reebok shoes, Nike shoes, Adidas shoes did not wear out. Okay, it lasted a long time. I'm not uh, <laughs> advertising for these products. I'm just, you know. But, you know, even their footwear did not wear out. Even their clothes did not wear, wear out. Even though they walked in that desert for such a long time. So what are we saying here? That he made sure that God took care of them in the wilderness. But was it God's plan for them? Absolutely not. But did God take care of them? Absolutely not. Yes. So while we can make certain choices that cause us to go into rough times, into difficult situations, difficult circumstances, but in those times when our heart is open to God, God will still take care of us and he will still bring us into the land of promise. Amen. So what we need to do is repent, change and ask God to uh, forgive us. Now, another thing to keep in mind before we go for our break is just like God has plans and purposes, the devil can also do things, has plans and purposes to oppose God's plan and purpose for our lives. So Satan can also bring in circumstances in our lives can, that can oppose uh, or hinder God's plan and purpose for our lives. So maybe he wants to hurt you. So he will bring situations in your life that can hurt you. He can bring people in your life that can hurt you. If he wants to stop you from doing what God wants you to do, he can bring in people and situations in your life that can stop you. Or sometimes he, he wants to hinder God's plan. He can even bring about distractions. Right? If you remember what we studied about um, uh, Maria Woodworth, you know, Maria Woodward, God had called her into full-time ministry. But what was a distraction? She fell in love with a soldier and she got married to that soldier. And so many years of her life were wasted and it was so unfruitful in her life. Okay. So we need to discern. We need to ask, God, is this you, you're working, you telling me what to do? Or is it because of my own actions or is it because of the enemy. If you know it's God's doing, God is working, God is leading you, then you respond, you do it. But if it's a result of your own actions, you ask God to forgive you, you correct yourself, you align yourself to God's will, you change. And if it's devil working you, you need to oppose the devil. God has given us the weapons for warfare. He's given us everything we need for life and godliness. And what we need to do is we need to press in. Just like Paul said, you know, God removed this thorn from my flesh. This thorn was something, was a, a scheme, plan of the enemy that was hindering him. God said, I'm not going to remove that thorn, but my grace is sufficient for you. And we see that in spite of that thorn, in his flesh or the hindrance from Satan, Paul went ahead and fulfilled God's plan and purpose for his life. Okay, we'll stop here and we'll come back after break. Thank you.